Hey everyone, it's uh, Joe Lyons here from The Automator, and today I have a couple of people. Jean Lalonde, is uh, you've seen him at the, the webinars. He's, he's also the main developer, or the developer, for Quick Access Pop-Up, uh, which is an amazing tool. And then Dylan uh, is, he's he, he made it to one webinar, but he's been using AutoHotKey for quite a while. Now, have, actually, Dylan, how long have you been using HP? Uh, maybe three, three years. Yeah. Okay, yeah. And you've been learning, and, and Dylan and I were discussing how we both wanted to be using classes, and, and Dylan just recently has dabbled a bit more in them. And I knew I should be using them, but we didn't even have a webinar on it. But I'm like, you know, I'd like to take a deeper dive. I really want to start learning them. And I knew Jean from, what was that, about nine months ago, roughly, where you re- completely rewrote QAP to utilize oh, classes. Is that right? Maybe a year, a little more okay. than a year. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Quick Access Pop-Up was developed uh, first uh, under the name Folders Pop-Up in 2013, and I think it was in 2019, so maybe two years ago, that I completely rewrote it using classes. Before that, I was using, I was using objects, and classes a kind of, of a way of using objects in a more usable, more clear way, so that's, uh, and it allows me to review some of the old code that, of course, when you start programming, you do things and, oh, it works. I stopped touching it. <laughs> it works without yeah. necessarily understanding how what's behind. So with the experience, I, I saw some pieces of code that I had the opportunity to to rewrite, not necessarily to add features, but to make it easier to maintain. and But also to make things easier to evolve because when it's clearly defined, it's easier to add functionalities to it without fearing to break something else because it may have side effects or things are more encapsulated. And so that's a better way to, it's called the object or orient, object oriented programming. That's the way, uh, that's the kind, the, the approach of programming that is made by using classes to define objects. Um, I'm really not an expert in this and I'm not a teacher of prog- programming teacher or object oriented or classes expert. I'm using it for a few years. And uh, so after discussion, we had uh, Joe and Dylan, we agreed that I I could give you a a small introduction to classes, not necessarily having all the answers to all questions, but at least seeing what I've done. Maybe I I created a small example of uh, using classes based on what we did, Joe, in the, the, the last webinar we did, and it could be a good reference for users who want to first understand what are objects in auto at key. Objects are a way of defining variables that can contain multiple values, not only one value. And it's very powerful in, and it's a kind of prerequisites to use classes. So maybe if you could put the link in the, the, the description of this video, just to uh, have an opportunity to view this webinar where we describe uh, objects. And in this webinar, I, I use object to create a, a collection of album, each album having songs in them. It was, I had a file with all the, the songs from the Beatles. And so we use objects to create al- uh, album objects and song objects, song al- objects being inserted into the albums. And um, so what I've done is just to convert that to using classes. So that's what we will see today. Uh, the, yeah. the other thing I wanted to mention was, it was just an interesting thing when, when I was talking to Isaiah's or Raptor X about classes and he literally, he's like, but I don't understand, you know, what you want. You know, you're, you're, they're just objects. I'm like, no, I want to use class. And then he, we, we went back and forth and back and forth. And then finally, he grasped what I was trying to say. But for him, because he uses objects so much, that's just a part of classes are just a part of objects. Um, and, and for me, when you're learning them, it's very easy to tell that, that it's, it's different. Right, like yeah. the, I use objects to store data all the time. Um, yet classes, to me, again, I can edit them and I can use them. But writing one and 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 this is where I'd also like to take a quick break of before we start actually keep digging into it of like the why why you should be using classes, right? Yeah. And and that was what I think our webinar that we did on classes back several years ago. We kind of missed. We skipped that whole step. But I think for people who because it's a this is the other thing I think you mentioned, uh, Jean. It's a learning curve, right? It's an investment in time. It's not something you like. Oh, hey, I got classes, right? Like I'm, I'm good. Yeah, and uh, you can see classes as a, a template for objects. You can use objects as they are, but you can group 
uh, objects that are related in, in the, the in the meaning or in the use of what they contain and put them together. So, for example, in one of the, the tutorials that I, I reviewed on, on the auto key forum, there's a definition where an object can be uh, described as, uh, no, I mean, uh, a class can be defined as a car. So it's the model of the car, the template, if you wish, the plan. And when you build a car, you create an instance of a car, so it becomes an object that you can manipulate that will be this car with this, these properties, but uh, that you can modify and make, make evolve. But you have the template for your car that you can define. So in what I show you, there's a template for an album, a record, uh, and there's a template for a song, and you can play with them and create instances, though. So, uh, uh, well, and, and to your, yeah. let me, let me elaborate a, bit, a little bit more on, cause, you got the gist of it, but I think what, what we're missing is the why. It, if you just had one car, you wouldn't want to have a class, right? But the point is with classes, when you have multiple cars and they're going to have different attributes and things that they can do, that's when using classes really is powerful, correct? That, like, that's the, the true benefit of like, hey, if you just have one of something, it's not a big deal, which is also why I don't work with GUIs. And generally speaking, creating GUIs um, – Often you're repurposing and creating multiple GUI, multiple instances of these things, and that's where knowing classes can can really help. Um, the other big benefit I think is the, the, what is the re, re, you want to reuse your code? That's a big one. We'll repurpose this thing. But the second one is the structure it gives you, right? Which is you mentioned with the object oriented programming, right? And it's kind of ironic that like I don't use classes yet. I use the like Excel object all the time and, and object oriented programming, and I understand the method and values of things of getting there, yet. I don't go create my own classes, which that's still, and, and they're so very related overall, to, and excuse the bad terminology here, function, functionality compared to functions, right? They're, they're similar in that concepts of what you're doing. But um, yeah, it, it's, it was just really hard for me to wrap around like the, the value of it. And I realized, because I don't generally speaking have those things where I have multiple cars in the template type of approach. Yeah. There's for sure a lot of benefits of using classes, but you discover them by using them and you have to, can, you can start small with something that works. And then as you have needs, you hope oh, maybe I could add this, this uh, property to my class or this method. So properties are kind of, uh, 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 properties, you know, uh, value. Uh, yeah, value, name, values inside your class and method are function. You talked about function before. So, uh, a, a method in a class is a function that is that is owned by this class. So, for example, if I have a, a class that is uh, album, I could have a, a method that will be album dot add song. So it will take a song and add it to the album. Uh, it could be um, a lot of so actions that are taken related to the content of uh, your class, uh, your object. I, I tend to think of methods as verbs, like you said, actions yeah. and things, and the uh, um, values or attributes uh, are adjectives. The, adjectives, yeah. yeah. My grammar is yeah. not that good, so I don't think. Mm -hmm. it's, yeah, I think yeah. it's an actual thing that it's a, a noun is the way I think of it. Of like, it's a thing that you go read. You know, it doesn't. It's not changing. You're getting it. But anyway, yeah. Yeah, and you can have um, properties that are arrays, so a list of. So, for example, in an album object, you will have a list of songs, track one, track two, track three. So there's a, a combination of single values and also multiple values inside an array. Yeah, and that's... And, and uh, a class can have subclass, nested class. So it, it, there's a lot of things. It's, we could take hours and hours um, looking well, at that. And, speak, and, and, but, yeah. Speaking of which, sorry... Um, Dylan, just because I know Dylan had mentioned this to me, he had actually, I don't remember how long ago you said, Dylan, but you had make sure you have to give you a walkthrough, right? And he was at like such a high level, you know, um, you want to elaborate just a little bit of like... Yeah, well, it, I think it was, you know, roughly two, maybe three years now. Uh, okay. And uh, when I first started learning on a hockey and I bumped into Maestris, you know, downloading studio, I was asking him a question because you know, the first thing I downloaded, I found a bug in it go figure and i messaged he's like oh that's a real bug so he started giving me some lessons we were just getting along knowing each other and the first lesson he gave me was classes mm -hmm. and i knew nothing about autoki i didn't even know what a function <laughs> was like so it, you know and 
you know, Maestris, you know, he, he when he gets excited, he goes. So it was like a two-hour class on, on classes, and I had yeah. no idea. So, <laughs> so you had to re revert learning. <laughs> to, yeah, exactly. Yeah, just go backward, backward, backward. <laughs> He is so yeah. funny. He, he'll he start off. Anyway, he, he, I think, John, you were on that call a couple weeks ago where we were talking about the dark gooey's themes, right? And he started off real slow, and then he's just started going. And it's just, it's awesome watching someone who fully grasps something. Life, life coding. Yeah. And yeah, it's just, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, sorry. Yeah. So, yeah. And so there are tutorials on the AutoAdKey forums. There are a few of them. There's even a discussion on the benefits and the, the good and bads about the other tutorials. So, and there's discussion. Your tutorial is, is worse. My, my tutorial is better than yours. So there's a lot of stuff there, but, uh, um, well, for me, uh, again, there, the there's no clear definition of what is the benefit, what are the benefits of classes. And someone refers to learning about object oriented programming. And I think that's where you really grasp what the, the whole idea uh, and duly uh, doing coding with completely with the approach of object programming is it's a kind of, I don't say this negatively, but it's a kind of religion. So you have to do things that way and it has Everything has to be contained into objects and object can talk one to the other and, and objects can react to an event. So there are a lot of things that can be done with object programming, object oriented programming. Uh, but you can also use these tools for 20% of their power and just right. have right. benefits even using this in the more simpler way than the full uh, OOP approach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and just back to the whole looking at the tutorials online and, and this is where I'm like, look, the more abstract a topic becomes and advanced it becomes, the harder it is to read from a forum post and, and get it, you know, yeah. and this is where having us live. And this is why also we wanted it to be like kind of just a, not a ton of people, but we can interact with Jean as he's going stuff and go, wait, 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 wait a minute. <laughs> you know, what was that little bit? And, and you can further explain where we don't understand stuff because, this this stuff when you try learning it, I learned the initial like web scraping and object oriented stuff from the forum, just reading the forum. In I didn't have a person to ask, and it was oh, it was tough. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to this. So well, maybe we could start. Yeah, let's get into it. No, that was it. We're done. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so some time ago, we did this tutorial uh, about objects, and I just want to show the the, the, the original script. Yeah, so uh, there's a text file. It's a tab separated uh, uh, text file. So each line contains a song of the Beatles. Come together on the album Abbey Road. That's the first track. That's the duration in seconds, and that's the year of the album. Okay, so I made a script that reads this text file, line by line, and for each line, it will check if it is the first time we see this album. If yes, it will create an object album here. And uh, then after that, it will read the song and add the song to the album, so et cetera, et cetera. All this using uh, functions and uh, objects. And what we'll do will is based on that. So you can return to that and to that webinar that we mentioned earlier, uh, if you want to go to more backward, if you wish, example, we will see. So this one is the same. So, and uh, okay, I'll show you just the, the result of this. It reads the file. It will show all the albums that has been detected in the text file. This is the longer file than the one that I showed you here. And it will copy to the clipboard the the result of the this file so this file that is only a raw data is now converted in a list of albums which each song its duration the year of the album year so that's the way it was processed by using objects so we can do the same using class we'll get the same end result but the method differs and it will make the code a little more more uh, readable, more uh, easy to use. And so let's start. And so I'll just jump in my line by line my code. And if you have question, you stop me at any moment. So the, the, the first loop here is reading the text file. For each line in the text file, each line is a song. So that's we've, we've shown 
we've seen here. So it will take the line here and split this line into an object that I name SA song. SA for me is a prefix to say single array. When you say AA, it is an associative array. So uh, you have arrays that are numbered and you have arrays that are with names. So this one is the, the function string split will return a single array. So it will be item one, two, three, four, each items on the line and items are the name of the song, the album, the track, the duration and the year. What we've seen here. So it will, after we have this object here, we know that the second item in this object is the album name. So what we will check first is do we already have this album? Because in the text file here, the same album can appear many times, okay? But we only have one album. We don't have, we, don't have, we have 10 songs, but only one album on this uh, Abbey Road album. So if we already have, if we don't have this key here, so here it's not, is if we don't have this album in our object albums that I created here. So this is an associative array. So it contains a list of albums using the name of the album as a key uh, to, um, to each item in the, in the object. So if we don't have this album, so we will create it. And we will create it using a class. And to create a class, we create an object, in fact. So O for me is a prefix for object. And we say, okay, we have a new album here. This album has this title and has this year because the album and the year is the same for all tracks of the album. The album is release a given year, it has 10 tracks. We don't need, we have in this text file here, the year repeated on each line. But in fact, this information is related to the album, not to each song. So, so we will create an album saying this is this title and this, um, this uh, year. So the album is defined a little bit lower here by using the word class, then the name of the album. Here I have some notes that I took that we won't review now. Yeah. Okay. So when you create an instance, what is called an instance, so, so one album, one given album, and you create it by using the new command here, it will trigger a, a function inside the class. Function inside classes are named a method. So there's a method that is triggered when you create uh, a class item, a class instance. So that's, and it receives here the title and the year. So that's what we add here, the title and the year. Whoops. So what it will do, it will create a new instance of our album class that inside the code here is referred as being this. This is like me, okay? I am, the, I am the, the object that is now created and I will add properties to this album, to this uh, object. Uh, STR for me, it's string, INT, INT is integer. So the title and the year. So what I receive here, I put it into a property that has here the same name as the, the variable that is received by the function, but it could be different, okay? I could name it the way I, w I want, but I want to use the same name here. Well, uh, John, let me yeah. interrupt yep. you just for a second, just for people who are possibly new to auto hotkey and don't understand this stuff. The earlier mention of the AA and AS and here with the STR and INT, those are just smart naming conventions you're using. They're not required. No. That's yeah. my way of coding. I like to know for each variable what type it is. And it's because I learned programming with a language that was very type structure and restrictive. It was, it was called Modula 2, it's not used anymore. But you had to define every variable with a type. Mm -hmm. And uh, so in fact, in auto at key, typing is very loose. So you can put a number into a string. Uh, even if you name it a string, you can put a number in it or vice versa. But um, for me, it helps to me remember that 
this is a string, that is a title, this is a number, that is the year. And this is here a single array, a simple array, simple array being arrays with uh, items numbered one, two, three, four, five, etc. Uh, that is an object that I'm creating here for this album and it will contain the songs of the album later. For now, we are just creating the, the envelope, if you wish, of the record. We'll put the vinyl inside the envelope uh, later. So that's what is done when this line here is executed. It creates a new item, which is O album. And for each song that we will review, we will check if it is a new album. And if it is a new album, it will create a new instance here of O album. And what we will do is that we will um, keep the list of albums inside the variables that is named here albums that are created that I created here and I use this variable here to check if we already have already have this album if we already if we create a new album we will add it to this variable by putting the object album that we just created here into our array with the key being the title of the album also, because I want later to sort all my albums by year, I'm creating here an index that will keep all the album names by year. So this object that I initiated here will have as a key the year, so the number five year, the year of uh, this line, of this song. And because there could be different albums for the same year, I'm also adding the album name here just to make sure we don't have two albums being mixed together because they were issued the same year. So that's something that will be used just at the end when we want to produce the end result that is this list here that is sorted by year. So Please Please Me and with the Beatles were the first year, the, the, the two albums in the first years of the, album, the, the Beatles career. So that's uh, what is done for a new, uh, for a new, album. If on the opposite it is an album we already have, so the else will be executed here and what we do is we take from this album's uh, object, we take the album that we found, so that we have here and we just put it into this variable because we will use this variable in the next lines. Okay for that? Yeah. Okay, so now we have we, we deal with the fact that we have a new album or not. Now we will deal with the song information. So the song information is the name, which is in fact the title of the song, the track number and the duration of this track. So we will create a new variable here that is O song that is using a class definition that is named song. And I put this class as a nested class under album. So if we look here, we have this album class and we will see a few of the items that are defined here. And oops, no, it's under here. We have a subclass or a nested class that is called song. It's not always, it's not necessary to make it nested. It could be a separate class and it, it would work. But the logic of songs is to belong to albums, so that's why it's logic to put the class, the song class definition beneath, uh, under the, the album definition. So if you oh. do nested, and, and there may be other benefits of using nested class, I just couldn't tell <laughs> because not something I've played enough with to discover, but to me, it was just logical to do that. And when I've done that in Quick Access Pop-Up, the software I developed, you have menus that are containers and you have menu items that are items inside the container. So they are nested class the same way as songs are nested inside albums. Can you clarify a couple of things here real quickly? Because yeah. just because I, it doesn't all fit on the screen, I'm. I want to make sure I understand when you say it's under, it's within. You want to see all? <laughs> <laughs> within, right? It's it's not here are the, the top class ends and then this one. It's Yeah. It, here is an album. Whoops. I just don't want to miss my code. Here's an album and here. But where does the album song? end? Is what I, I don't. I'm saying where does the album end? 
Okay, album and after song because song is nested inside. So album is ending yeah. ear. So yeah. this ear is a nested class under album. Yeah, and and it, uh, it has two methods that we will see later. And under album, we have uh, two, three uh, methods also that uh, we can, uh, that we will see later. And does yes. song inherit Something to know which you know album it's under automatically, not automatically. Oh, okay. Um, it's more a kind of definition relation, not, not an, act, an actual relation when you create things. In fact, what we will do here, we'll create the song and then we will add the song to this album, okay, using a method of the album object. But first, let's see the, the song creation here. We say new. It's a new instance of a song to that will have as content the title of the song or the name, the track number, and the duration. So let's go to this song here. So title, track duration, this title, this track, this duration equal the three values that we receive. So we just assign the properties to the instance of this song. And later we will look at the next line and, uh, and on the next line, we will already have the album. So what we'll do, we'll create a new song. So each time we loop in this loop here that is reading each line of my text file, we create a new song and we assign this song to an album. That will be the way to retrieve this particular song later because this variable song is overwritten at every, for every line of the text file. Okay, so we have our song and we say, okay, we add this song to the album. So let's go to the album and here we have a, prop, uh, a method that is called add song. And inside the method, we have a variable that is called this. This refers to the, the class object we are in. So this is this album. Okay? The instance of that. One. The, is, the instance, exactly. And this, in this instance of, in this um, album class, we created, we created here a simple array of songs. So song one, song two, song three, song four. So what we do here is we say to this array here, at the number, number one, two, three, we don't know. If we look at the text file, the first one we receive is track one. Second will be track two. But we could receive track three at the beginning. So it, so it doesn't matter in what order we receive the, the song, but we say in this uh, ordered uh, array at number one, we will put this song. And, and let me interrupt you one more time here, Sean. Yeah, you do. This is this is you're doing a great job. Um, the the this because we didn't talk about scope, at least I don't remember at all, right? But it's really important to understand the this because a scope is tied to that instance of the class that the, yeah. the class definition and if you were in that subclass that you created that would also be local set right yeah uh, it says for every function that you have in quick in uh, auto at key the variables that you declare declare inside a function or inside a method are local here so this one here we receive it from outside so when the method is called we receive a variable here and we add it to to this variable and this being this album. Right, but because okay. that's where I was getting a little confused because that this is within that add song function. However, it, yeah. it, there, the, okay, this is a special variable that in fact is related right. to the class instance we are in. Yes. Every this that you see here are related to this <laughs> it's a terrible album. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> Which I think is why they called it this, right? Yeah, it, and, and we have multiple albums. We create here multiple albums. Each of these different albums are stored in an array of albums. I could have called it collection here. Maybe it would have been clear. The difference is only the S here. So, so each album that we create is stored in an array. So we can retrieve them later. 
Okay, they are all different. They have, have, all have the same structure of an album, but they are, all have different contents. So the disc that we have here is a disc that refers to this album that we uh, created. And this album here, O album, is the one that we just created here or the one that we retrieved because we already had it. And okay. we, are adding a, we are adding a song to this album. Yes, Dylan? What does this mean when you have the nested class? Is it for the new nested class or is it for the original class that you're in? It is for the nested class. The nested class. So yeah, it only so, goes up one level. So how yeah. would you call the original class then from your nested class? I don't know. You, okay. you, you <laughs> I, know. I, I never had to do it. So, okay. <laughs> you, so if there's a scenario where you see, okay, I would like to do it, there's no relation that I know. Yeah, there, there's, uh, yeah. There's something here. There's this, and there's the base um, uh, reserved word that refers to the class definition of the song, and the variable name or the reserved name underscore underscore class contains the name of the class. So there may be a way here where, where we could say base the 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 parent of this base and refer to it so there may be a way but i'm just never used it well, yeah okay. and maybe we'll maybe later on see if mace can join us and and you know i will we'll do a part two with yeah, uh, right. <laughs> let's learn the basics first <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's, a good, thing... it's a good question the kind of thing that probably you can do but i just never had to do it yeah. Gotcha. And the other thing I, uh, um, which I, I think is really good that you mentioned it there, there's, there are some in the class keywords that you, yeah. you know, you have to use them and you can't use them. If you use them elsewhere, you know, you, you're asking for trouble. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and depending on what editor you use, these words will be a different color just to let you know, oops, be careful. This is, this could be, uh, this would have a special meaning here. Mm -hmm. So we added the song here. And next step is often it is good in an object that is owned by a parent object. For example, a song is owned by an album to say to this object, who is your parent? Okay. So what is, is it's doing here in the song definition that we have here, there's no mention of parent, but here I'm adding an attribute to my song that is called O Album, and it tells the song that it's, it belongs to the Abbey Road album here, to this album. Okay, I'm adding a song, and I say to this song that its parent album is this, because this refers to the album I'm in. Okay, we'll execute this code step by step for a few lines just to make sure we see all these things working because I'm just talking here and you could be, not believe me. So we will see it in a second. So we add the song and then I have here a method that is show me for the song and a method that is that has the same name show me for the album. And we will see what the content, so the show me Method here is just parsing the content of the album and building a string that will show us what's inside this uh, this object. Same thing for the song. So let's run it. Unless you have questions before. No. I think no. Okay. So I'll uh, use the debugging mode of a site and run it line by line. So we create the two objects. We create a variable that contains the name to the file I'm using here. And I'm reading this file and I get the first line. The first line contains come together, Abbey Road, etc. We split it into a, a, a simple array. Do we know this album? We don't know this album. That's the first line we read. So we won't have this album. So it will go here and it will create the new album. So I go down in the creation here. It assigns the value we receive is the title, Abbey Road, the title of the album and the, the year of the album. And we assign these two values here to, um, to this, uh, this item. And we create an object that will later contain the songs of the album. Now, um, and the other one is that, which I, I, I think you somewhat talked about, but, but that underscore new, 
that is, it's a very specific thing inside of a class, correct? It's a that, reserved name that is a method that is uh, required to create an instance of a class. Well, and is, and this is where I wanted, because um, I've heard instantiate in an, an instance of, is, and is that new? Is that when you're instantiating the class? Is that what it goes through? Yeah, it creates an instance of a class object. And it only does uh, what's in that, that new function, or sorry, I guess it's... Um, that's what it does is within that new it's it's called once when you when you use new as a keyword that we have here okay it it calls this and you give here the parameters that has to be to be planned here so there sometimes there's no parameter required right. but most of the time there are parameters here that will describe the object that you are creating okay and so then that will... where are we yeah. Uh, uh, I'll, right, do next, I'll do next line and it will take me to the line. Okay. So we add this album created. Mm -hmm. Now we will call the show me and I'll just, I'll show you just once it's, it's building a string based on the, the, the different values that we have in this object. I'll return and it will just show us Oh, it didn't show it. Okay. Oh, yeah. I have a variable here that is. That I, sorry, oh. I'll just restart. Yep. I added just because, and we will jump to here. Okay. So it shows that this album, the class of this object is album. Its year is, its songs is empty. There's no song yet and we have the title. So that's the content of the object O album at this time. Mm. Okay, we continue. We will add the album to the array of albums here and also to the array of albums by year. We will use it only at the end. Next, we create the song. So we go inside the new song. We assign the title, the track and the duration. And we will look at the content of this song object, which, oh, it was skipped again. How come? Oh, add song. No, okay, add song. We are now at show me. Show me will show the dialog box. So this object belongs to the class album.song. So the nested class song. It has a duration, a track number, an album. So the album here I put the name, the title of the parent album, and the title of the song itself is come together. Next, we'll do the same. Okay, here we, okay, and now because we added a song to our album here, we now have a, the song number one in our album. So we have the same values we had before, but the song here has been added. So I'll do it quickly to add two more songs. So this is the second line is the same album and the third line too. So for these two lines, we will just skip this part and just retrieve the albums from the array of album for the song, for the right. album Abbey it's Road. Yeah. yeah, we add the song, uh, we create the song, we add the song to the album, we show the song, which is something on the album Abbey Road, number two. And we look at the album now, it contains Come Together and Something because we added these three, these two songs. Doing the same thing. And now I will just, yeah, add song. So the song Maxwell Silver Hammer is now added to the album. So I'll, cont I'll just remove these lines here because you got the ID. Don't need to show it every time. Same thing here. So this, loop here is parsing the whole file, getting all the tracks from all the albums, creating the albums when required and adding the songs to the albums. Okay. So that's the first part is building the whole, the whole thing. And uh, we can do it now, instead of using the short version, we will use the alpha file here. Okay. Which contains the full discography of the Beatles. And I will, execute by stopping here the next time. So what we will do after that is we'll, we'll create a string, the string that will contain this here, 
the string will be put into the clipboard and allow me to paste this string here. So here is a way to structure the content that we have in our object. We can we could create this this output in all different ways depending on what we need. Okay. Um, so and to do that, we will create we will use a method. Okay, I'll just remove here the show me. It show here we will loop here every albums in the uh, chronological index that we created with AA albums by year. So for each album, starting with the first one in 1963, which will be O1 album, we will use a method that is called get string. So this method here of the album will create a string that will in the end be this, mm -hmm. okay? That's a string for one album. This method here, get string, will just create a string. But you can imagine that you would have method, for example, to play the song, okay? If in the song's property, we would have the MP3 file path, we could have a method that will say, play the file, play the song, and then you could hear the song. Uh, you could have a GUI that would put all the songs together and you could create iTunes based on that. So that's the very basic of iTunes that we're doing here. We have a few years of work to make it look like iTunes, <laughs> but, that, but that's the basic of iTunes that we well, have here. So, John, just yeah. let me interrupt you just for a second here, because some yeah. people, if you're, again, and this probably would have been better at the beginning to talk about, is, hey, I could have read that file and just used a couple variables and, and got like that output, you know, pretty easily. However, and that's what you're discussing now is given the structure you have, the flexibility to do what you want is it's, it's, you know, so yeah. much more advanced. The uh, other, uh, the other thing I wanted to add was, cause I've done the original way of just using variables. And when you start using objects and classes, it is crazy how much faster using objects are when you're, you know, looping over them and doing stuff with them. I was really amazed at how much speed you pick up. It was it was very surprising. Yeah, and, and objects are easy to reuse. You can use them in various contexts with, you know, with knowing that everything uh, behind the object name or the variable name will be the exact structure that you expect right. and not something that could be different because it's been done in, the, in a different way by using just different objects code. But you could do very good ob uh, object programming and have something that would be workable and very strong. But what I also like about classes is the ability to have things being named clearly. Uh -huh. And when you want, you want to add a method, you just go to the, your class, you add your method and it becomes a verb, as you said, that can be used from now on, uh, reusing all the structure of the, the, the class uh, it belongs to. So let's take a look now at the, how we will build the, so the collection string is the whole string that we have here for the, for all the albums. So let's start with one album. So collection, it starts empty and we get the first album, which is, uh, we cannot see its name here because it's an object, but we will see it in a second. So we go down into the method get string. So get string for this album. What it will return is the title, and between parentheses, the name, the, um, the year of the album. Mm -hmm. So we just continue here and we receive this variable here now contains the title of the album and a separator here. And let me just, so now we are inside a loop that is will, that will loop every song in this album. So the songs are here and for each iteration, we have one song and for this one song, we will get the string now for the song. Go down inside this method. It will return the track, a column, the title, the duration divided by 60 to get the, the seconds and the minutes separated, all this between parentheses and it will return a value that will be added to our collection string that now contains the album title and the first song, song I saw her standing there. And we can continue for a few lines here. And we now have five songs in our album, Please Please Me. 
and we'll continue until we finish with this album. There's many, many short songs on the al Beatles album. So we are now in the second album and we will just get the string here. So we won't see it in the debugging tool because it's too long, but it's now in a variable. So we will continue without stopping and go until here. So it loop all the albums for every year, look at all the songs in each album and created a variable here that contains the whole thing. And it will ask us if you want to copy it to the clipboard, we will say yes. And because we said yes, we copy it to the clipboard and that's finished with the app. And if we return here and I delete and I paste what's in my clipboard, so we have this this uh, string that has been pasted here that contains what we need. So that's what just one example. I get string to show that we can create a method that will use the information inside the object to do something. Getting a string is a very simple thing, but playing the song, deleting the song, adding, removing, uh, processing. Uh, the, so there, there are a million of things that can be done with, um, with methods for a given class. So that completes the, the walkthrough of this code that is creating content in classes and using them in a simple way, which is creating a string here. Awesome. Thank you, Jean. Um, yeah, thank you. One, one thing that I don't know if it comes through in this example, or maybe you can just explain it to me how it is applicable. Um, but like in from what I've seen when Maceret does stuff, with especially with GUI things, and, it, and it's returning like a handle to each instance of the different things that you've created, right? Um, and and that handle is how you are able to to know which one, which instance of the thing is that you've created. Is that in here? Like that? That's what you're doing up there. Is that in fact where I keep the object that I create is in these two objects here. Come. I could show you, uh, for example, after, so this is my, just a developing function that will show what is the content of this array here. So I think I can run it right away. So it shows all the albums. So, so AA album, And let's take a simple name, help. Mm -hmm. Dot str title, I think it was. So I will just, whoops. So let's rerun the script. You want that ending paren? Yeah, the paren. Yeah, end. it's not, it's not needed. Yeah, I was going to use my my uh, debugging tool, which is a function. But so, so we have this list of album, and inside this album, we will now just go to this album to look at the title of the album, which is "Help." And now, if we want to go to a given song, so we will go to "Sa Songs" number. Let's say number three dot str title so we should get for the album help let's just uh, predict what we should get hope it will work for number three we should we should get you've got to hide your love away so let's run this So we got this, this title here because we, so that's the, the, the handle, if you wish to retrieve information from our different albums right. is this array here, which well, is sorted by name. And then we can go inside any parameter, any property. And because this property is an array, we can go in number one, two or three and get information from right. this sub object. Yeah, and correct me if I'm wrong here, but like that's basically still just leveraging object structure. Right, because, and, and but the key being, inside your class, you're returning back, and you're using the this to then shove that into that object, and that's where the this is being used. 
Yeah. Not this is happens. used only when you are inside the, the class code. Well, but that's what but, I'm saying. It's like there's a bridge between the <laughs> um, – it's where you store that, and that's where you're giving it, I think, the name of the album, is that, or there were different levels. But that's the key of, of – it's, it's that part of where you actually store that somehow. Um, and that's where with the GUIs, to me, it's a little clearer, or at least in my head it's clearer. But I, I think I'm getting it now. It's um, – you have to remember inside the class that this is a placeholder for that instance of what you're doing. Yeah. But unless you store that somewhere, you know, when you return – you're returning that back, and that – gets replaced with that handle to the whatever it is that you're assigning it to. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The, the song object here that is created is overwritten, so it's not kept. So you have to store right. it somewhere in order to be able to retrieve it. Right. The song, the way to retrieve them is by storing them inside albums. Okay, thank you. And albums, just to be able to retrieve albums, you need something to retrieve the albums. And the way I'm using is to create these two arrays here which yeah. are arrays of objects album and they are they are classified they are uh, tagged or the key to retrieve them is the album name which is help here or could be see when i Abby like Rowe. i said i worked through classes several these boys five years ago easily and when i was doing them i wasn't very familiar at all with objects and and i think that's what really confused me was you know, I'm using the, this inside, but then after you pull it out, you know, you want to shove it into something to, yep. to be able to to leverage it. And that's where I was getting confused. But anyway, yep. okay, thank you. So there are a million ways to use uh, classes and uh, in quick access pop-up, just to give you a few examples, I have a class to deal with the command line, parameter, command line parameters that are passed to the application when you launch it from the command line. So the new... Uh, and this, in this case, the class is used only once. Usually classes are used when you want to create multiple instances of a given objects or multiple song, multiple album, multiple cars. In this case, there's only one instance of the command line parameter, but coding it using the class uh, method is a good, is a convenient way to do it. So what it does, it creates when you create the command line, it will read the command line and store every value inside an array of parameters. So later I could use, so for example, when I create this instance here, I store the, 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 the result of the parsing of the command line inside this variable. And later I can use this variable with saying, I want to use the parameter setting because in the parameter line, there was slash settings, comma, colon, something. So that's how I retrieve it. So it makes my code very clear by you. So it could have been done not using an object, just using, uh, not using a class, just using an object. But when you start using classes, you like it and you want to use it, even if it's not necessary to use classes. So that's an no. example here. There's another uh, admin silent, which is, uh, I think I, we just talked about, uh, Dylan, uh, uh, in our last uh, chat. Yep. Uh, so that's another parameter that can be used to define if we want to do something or not in the application. Um, and, and one other thing, John, which just to point out, because this really, I was very surprised with AutoHotKey in this one, is when, when you're trying to call a function, in auto hotkey and you don't use an include and it can't find it, it will come up with an error and say, hey, this, what function? This function doesn't exist. But when you try to call a class that the class doesn't exist, yeah. you don't get that error, right? Yeah, um, and if you call, yeah, and it's uh, you have to be very cautious. That's a, a weakness of auto hotkey here. Uh, if you call a method in a class that requires three parameters and you give it only two, normally for a function, uh, auto key will give you an error. There's a right. missing parameter. But for classes, there's no error. So uh, there's no error message. Uh, it will just not be executed, and you may not notice that it's not been executed great okay, in some yeah. case. So you have to make sure that you uh, really uh, create your method with, uh, with care and you use your method with care. There's a way to... Uh, where is it? 
uh, if I go to There's a, you know, there's the, the new method here. There's another method that is, I will remove oh. my, this code here. Oh. That is, I, I put just to disable this command, but if this, if it exists inside a class, it will be executed each time you call the class. And, um, in this case, what it does, it checks if it has the, the, the number of parameters that are expected for the function. I don't understand the details of all these things here that are from linear spoon on the AutoHotKey forum. But what it does, if it, there's no three parameter when three should be required, you will have an error. I disabled that after I debug my thing because when you do debugging using the step debugger oh, here, yeah. it will go through that every time it's, it's a pain. So once it's debugged, you can disable that, but it's a way just to check that you, you have the right number of parameters for your function. Uh, if you don't have it, you just have to be very careful to check it for yourself. So for example- well, I, I was gonna say- are, we, Yeah. Well, I was gonna say, we also have to retag this video of how to properly use debugging because you're doing a great job <laughs> demonstrating. Yeah, I'm, yeah it, it, I'm it, still it, bad it at awesome. that. I'm, I've been at I've, the message box like yeah, here. I've, yeah, I've been years without using debugging in sight and uh, using message box. You know, I have a very, my own message box to check what's the content, but um, sometimes message box will not tell you from where, what, has, what, what are the lines that has been executed before. So you have this, and if I, can just yeah and being able to step through it and jump over and stuff it's it's very handy mm -hmm. yeah uh, let's just go here inside get string here so here we can see all so we can mouse over what i've done is to mouse over to look at the content of the variable but here you have all the, the variables content in the list and you have here all the, the, the line that has been executed to take you there. So it's not very um, uh, yeah. here, here in this example, but if uh, um, uh, a go sub has been used to call a command and then this command called a function that called another function, you will have here the list of, and sometimes you can get to a place from different sources depending on how oh, your yeah. code is structured. Yeah. So it really helps to know, okay, oh, I'm here because right. of that. So you put a stop point here and you run and it will stop at this point and you can see from where it comes. And sometime with all the events that can occur and trigger uh, some actions, it's good to be able to know from where you come. Yeah. So I really like the debugger of site. Uh, that's the only one I really know. I, and I didn't use the one from VS Code or others, but this one is to me is uh, yeah. Very good tool. Now, the other thing, by the way, is in AutoHotKey, you can put functions in your, um, in three places in your LIB folders, you know, like, in, uh, and it will automatically go search there for them. Um, classes, if I remember correctly, it doesn't do that. Is that right? You, you'd have to. I don't think. But and I, know, I don't use all these methods for a function. I, I, me, I prefer to have everything in the same file, which is something some people will say that's a very bad way of doing things but uh, for example quick access pop-up is 20 33 thousand lines yeah. with a few includes but the includes are things that i took from someone else and, and I, yeah. I will never touch right. but what i like is in that is that if i search for a variable it will get all the it will get all the variables for the, right. the occurrence of this variable in my code in the whole code without having to care about am i in the right file the right include Right. Uh, so that's, uh, to me, that's my preferred way, but uh, I certainly would not uh, advocate that it is the way of doing that. Uh, yeah. I know people will prefer to have everything separate in separate files with all um, logically uh, separated. That's different. Well, especially if it's something you're going to repurpose and use in different tools, right? That's where yeah. code maintenance becomes very helpful. Um, but what I wanted to get back to was, what Maestriath does, like in his M function um, and class and, and other tools, is he will instantiate, he creates a function to call his class inside that same file. And that way, AutoHotKey will actually use the, the, the class without you using an include. 
Uh, it was a really interesting, I'm like, wait, what are you doing here? And he just put a function with the same name above it in the same file in the right spot. And then it automatically, you know, pulls it in. He didn't have to have an include. I'm like, oh, that's, that's an interesting way to, to, to do that. You lost me, but uh, look at you. <laughs> <laughs> well, just at the top of his, in, so pretend your class is here, right? Above it in the same file, he gives, a, he creates a function with the same name. Right. Okay. And calls and it calls the class. And so that way, if you're in a whole another file, which clearly you don't, you know, you're not doing that in QAP, you wouldn't have to have an include. It would automatically, because it would, you know, that file stored in a certain spot, you're calling your function. The function is calling the class you created, right? Which is kind of, mm-hmm. yeah, saves you a little bit of work, right? If you yeah, don't yeah. want to use an include. But anyway, yeah. Very cool. There's a lot of things you can, you can, um, Take an object and assign it to a different class. So you can have two similar classes, but we some differences and a given object could be created with, with one class or the other. But if it's been created with class B, you can say later, uh, assign this object to class B. I don't remember how I never had to do it, but it's just an example of a kind of things that you, you can do. Uh, and with nested classes, there are other things that can be done. So it's a very powerful tool and you can have for years to just discover everything and yeah. you just need a reason to use these these features right. at some right. point it's oh that's a solution to the need i have sometimes you find another solution that is less convenient longer to code and at some point you discover this new way i oh wow that's a, a nice feature yeah i remember years ago when i was learning python and i was going to python meetups and I was talking to a guy who actually, and quite a few people there knew AutoHotKey and had used it this and that. And this one guy, he still used it, but not as much as Python. Anyway, I was talking to him about, yeah, I, this is several years ago. I said, I just, I'm finally starting to use functions and this and that. And I said, you know, when I first started using them, the light bulbs really went off. I'm like, oh, compared to ghost subs, like I never used another ghost sub again. You know, I'm like, functions are amazing. And he said, yeah. And when you start using classes, it'll be the same way. And I'm like, uh, okay. I'm like, I, you know, and I still, you know, that was years ago, but I do see, you know, people like you and Maestri using them and going, all right, I definitely see there's value here. But again, I think it does have to do with your needs. And I don't, I don't create a lot of GUIs um, and I just haven't had other stuff that. Yeah. And you are more on the automation part of using a toy key than the developing an application. And we sure, mentioned that really before in, in an right. earlier uh, right. uh, webinar we had. I'm more more using a toy key to develop an application. So of course it's bigger and it benefits from a better structure. When you're coding something that will automate another application like you do with things that I still do not completely understand, but <laughs> ACC and these things. So then your, your, um, the script really would not point. be 33,000 lines long. Right. Well, and, let's hope not. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Oops. So, um, so that's maybe a, a, a need for the need for using classes, not the same, depending on the type of coding oh. you're doing. No, it's a really, it's a really good insight because I hadn't thought about it, but you're spot on, right? And, which is also why, like, I do, especially like with Excel, I'm, I'm using the Excel object, you know, and doing stuff. So interesting object oriented programming, that aspect of it. But it, it's a really good insight as to why I'm not, at least so far. But again, I, I do see the value and I do want to learn them. And especially when I go, I'll look in the forum or I'll get something from Maestrith or someone that does some work and they put it in a class and I'm like, oh crap, you know, I need to figure, and I just get lost. And even though I grasp the concepts, because they're not rocket science, but it just, it can be very, it can seem complex. But learning objects was the same way. When I first started learning objects, that data structure, it took me a while to read it and really focus on it. And now it kind of feel like I'm looking at JSON and I can see, I can see it, you know, without thinking about it. So yeah, yeah. it's just used yeah. to it. Yeah. Do you have any other questions, Dylan? Are we? No, this has been amazing. Um, yeah. I guess. I still use Go subs. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Me too. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, sometimes, like, on my recent script, uh, I, you can't do nested functions. So it's like, you got to use a Go sub uh, to, to get out of the function so I can then enable another function. So I, I find weird uses to use Go sub still. Um, and like in, like John was saying with the classes, uh, I found the need for it because I kept trying to create this big thing that kept calling upon itself. So it was just it was a needed thing to use a class. So, um, yeah, no, it's, a, I thought your tutorial was amazing. I learned a lot. So let's do a part two with uh, the exercises that we'll have done 
until yeah. then. <laughs> right. Yeah. Thank you again, John. That was awesome. Yeah. yeah thank a you, pleasure. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye, guys.